Adrian. Change it up. Just keep standing. And you tried, I know you tried. I wish I had CC to help me. My next CC, come on. Pray, Just keep standing. Pray, 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 God bless you everyone. Thank you for joining this teleconference service tonight. God bless you for joining us. And the songwriter says, All oh, well, after you've done all you can, just stand, just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. It will come. Nothing can stop the salvation of the Lord. When we when the, we've done all we can. Because we know we are limited as human, but God is unlimited. He's an unlimited God. So whatever it is we need of the Lord, whatever we pray for, whatever we seek, just do your bit. Pray, seek the Lord. And when we've done all that we can, we just stand. And God will see us through. God bless you. Thank God for you today. I'm going to speak on a topic of be not deceived. Be not deceived. 
because this deception leads to destruction. That's the topic today. Be not deceived. Deception leads to destruction. Amen. But before I do, I'm going to just have a short prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless your name. Thank you for everyone that's joined us tonight. I pray you'll lead us. I pray you'll direct us. I pray you'll speak to us, Lord Jesus. Speak, Lord, thy servant hears. Have your way, we pray. We give you glory. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God bless you, my brethren. And we're going to go into this word of deception. It's taken from First Kings. First, First Kings. First Kings chapter 13. I'm going to read from verses, quite a long chapter, but I'm going to read it because there's something in this book that in this particular chapter which I want us to look at. And you know, it's all about deception. Deception leads to destruction. God has been good to us. And we are truly blessed to know who God is and to understand God by His Word. We perceive God. We, we see God. We acknowledge God. We comprehend God. We, we understand Him by His Word, by every word that He speaks. And you know, the Word of God is true. Its, it's foundation is true. The, every part of the Word of God is true. There's nothing to be put aside. Everything God says, He means it. He's not a God who changed. Because He said in His Word, I am the Lord, I change not. Even from the days of your father, He have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. And He said, went on to say, Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. He's a, he's a trusted, true and faithful God. Oh, we see dispensation over the years has changed God's attitude towards men, but God remains the same. God is the same. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His kingdom has no end. But we all look at deception because deception is a big issue in the world today. It's a great issue. And you know, this says the deception is deception is deliberately when you deliberate when one deliberate cause someone to believe something that is not true especially for their gain so if anyone tried to cause us to believe something that is not true and we accept it and they are doing it for their gain but we are we if we accept it we are doing we are accepting it to our demise that's what deception is. And if we go all the way back, I always start with the Garden of Eden because that's where deception started. That's where deception started in the garden when God created man. That is where deception started. The woman was deceived. Deceived with a lie. And we see what that deception led to. Led to them, it led to them be thrown out of the garden. They were thrown out because of deception. They believed something, they believed a lie. Eve believed a lie. But let us look at the scripture now. Um, it's a scripture taken from First Kings, First Kings chapter 13. It's a bit of a long verse, but we will get the, the jits of it. 1 Kings chapter 13, it says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord, unto Bethel, and to Jeroboam, stood by the altar of incense, to burn incense, and cried against the altar of the Lord, saying, O altar, O altar, thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Jeshua by name, and unto thee shall he offer the priests on the high priest's places and burnt incense upon thee, and men bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are 
upon shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar of Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him, and it dried up. So that he could not pull it in again, again to him. And the altar was rain, and the ashes poured out of the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hands were stored again, and became as it was before. So, we we'll look at these verses now. So, Jeroboam was the king of Israel, and he put forth his hand against the man of God on the altar. And when he put forth his hand against the man of God, the Bible says his, his hand dried up. His hand dried up. And he cried unto the man of God and saying, Entreat the, the Lord. And the, the, the prophet entreat the Lord and his hand returned normally. So because he put forth his hand against the man of God, against the altar, his hand dried up. And he asked the man to entreat the face of the Lord and and the man of God prayed for him, and his hands was restored. And the man of God bes besought him, saying, The king, and the king's hand was restored again, and it became as it was before. So this man of God, this prophet, this man of God had power with God. He had power with God, but he was later on deceived, as we will go to see, how he disobeyed God. You know, sometimes we feel that we are at a place that we can correct God, or we can, we can con contradict the word of God, or we can disobey. And this is deception. This is deception. So uh, verse 7 says, And the king said unto the man of God, Come with me. So after the king's hand was healed, he said to the man, Come with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou give me half thine house, I will not go with thee, neither will I eat bread nor water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of God, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way thou comest. So, uh, God told this prophet, after he left the king, Jeroboam, that he should not eat or drink water in the place, neither should he return. By the same way that he came, he should go back another way. So that was the commandment of God to him. He's a prophet of God. He's hearing from God. And when we are hearing from God, this is so important that we understand that we have to listen to the voice of God. We have to know the voice of God and don't deviate from the voice uh, from the word of God. Because God, the Lord said, He honors His word above His name. So, above all things, God has got so many names. But His word is more greater to Him than His name. But His name can change. We, he has changed many His name over the years. Jehovah, God, uh, God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Tinkesh. All those Jehovah's he name was changed. One time he was called Jah. And he's got so many names. 
the Rose of Sharon, the Bright and Morning Star, the Lily of the Valley. Those are all the names. He's got so many names, but his word. His name may change, but his word stays the same. And if God says something to us, and you speak to us, we ought to know the voice of God. So God told this prophet, when you leave that city, do not eat nor drink, in other words, fast, until you return. Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. Now, some things we don't understand because we look at things from our own perspective. We have our own pre, 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 premeditated ideas of what we think we is right and what we think is wrong. But God has a reason and he knows best. And if he said to the prophet, eat no bread, drink no water until you come and return not the same way, find another way to return. So he, so he obeyed because he said, so in verse 10 he said, he went another way and returned by, and returned not the way he came to Bethel. So he found another way back to his home. He didn't come the same way that he came to Bethel. He obeyed that much. But this is, a, this is so important because we find that he obeyed some part of what God says. But he has not, further on we'll see, he has not be, obeyed everything. So it says 99% won't do. Because if we remember last week, we talked about Saul, how Saul was commanded by Samuel to kill all the Amal Amalekites, all of them, man, woman, child, everything, animal, everything. And Saul obeyed part of it because he killed some of the people, but he did not kill everything that God told him. He did not destroy everything that God told him to destroy. It. And so he was rejected. Same way, he was deceived by the devil, and the devil, he obeyed part of the command, but he did not pay the full. So the prophet went back another way after he he called unto the Lord and the Lord healed the hand of Jeroboam he did such great work he spoke call unto the Lord and the Lord healed unto him and restored the hand of Jeroboam going on in verse 11 it says now there dwell an old prophet in Bea in, in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and the word which is spoken unto the king. Then they told him also to their father, and their father said unto them, What way he went? And his son had seen the way the man, the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto the son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the son, after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak tree, and he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cameth out of Judah? And he said, I am. Then, said he, then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this with thee in this place. So he knew his, the command that God gave him. He knew what God said to him. He repeated to the old man, the old prophet. But so, you know, sometimes we, we, deception comes in many forms and many ways. So he knew what he was to do, 
but because this man of God persisted persisted he somehow got became deceived he he became deceived in verse 17 says for it was said unto me by the word of God so this is the old prophet saying to the man of God it was said unto me by the word of God thou shalt not eat no bread nor drink water here there nor turn again the way which thou comest and the old prophet the man said he said unto me he said unto him I am a prophet as thou art and the angels spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying bring him back with thee into thy house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied unto him so the old prophet saw the man of God heard what the man of God did how he healed the hand of Jeroboam and how he was told by God not to eat bread nor drink water until he returned from whither he came and the old prophet said to the man of God I am a prophet too as thou art and the angel spake on spake unto me by the word of God saying bring him back with thee unto thy house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied deception he lied can you imagine the man of God the prophet of God who God used to do such great wonder to heal the arm the hand of the king and if this false prophet the old prophet come unto him and said the angel of the Lord came to me and told me you can come back to my house and drink and eat and drink and the man of God accepted was deceived see how deep deception lie because that old man the old prophet lied to the man the prophet lied to the man of God tell him the angel came the angel he lied upon the angel because no angel came and told him anything by the word of the Lord he lied saying bring back to my thine house that he may eat and drink with thee would see the thing is even myself if I say something to you and you can't find it in the Word of God don't accept it if I say anything to you and it's not in the Word of God do not accept it it has to be in the Word if it's not in the Word then you're being deceived and in these days there's so much deception going on people are saying all sorts of things which is not biblical which is not God's Word they're claiming that God speak to them and tell them this and tell them that and God hasn't God hasn't spoken to them if I say to you God told me to say this it's in the Word if it's not in the Word search it I don't want to go out of the Word of God I don't want to deviate from the Word of God I don't want to add anything to the Word of God I don't want to take anything out and this is it the man God told the prophet that God told the prophet the man of God that when you leave Bethel you should not return back the same way you came that's number one and you should not eat or drink until you return that's a clear clear commandment so why would he believe that God changed his mind and spoke to some other man this is why we have to know the Word of God and stay in the Word of God this is so essential to our salvation 
Everything we believe concerning God must be in the Word. It is, it is, it is so relevant that no one should change the Word of God. And God is not a God who changes. As I quote before, He says, I am the Lord, I change not. God's words is the same. He is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of mercy and grace. So the old man prophet came to the man of God and lied unto him, deceived him, and told him the angel spake to him by the word of God and saying, Bring him back with thee to thy house that I may eat bread, drink water. But he lied unto the, unto the man of God. So he went back and eat bread in the house, in his house, and drink water. It's a lesson for us to know that you know we are to stay, we are to stand on the word of God, and it's so it's a, it's a good thing when we stand on the word of God. If we deviate from the word and move away from the word, we are putting ourselves into deception because the word of God is not deceitful. The word of God is true. The Word of God is like an open book. There's nothing to hide. Everything we want is in the Word. And also every experience that we go through in this life, men of old, patriots, prophets, saints have been through it. Everything we experience, every feeling, all our infirmities, our tears, God knows about our tears. God knows how it is to have a broken heart. God knows how it is to suffer rejection. God knows how it is when we are despised. He was touched with all our infirmities. Jesus came to earth to understand and feel, see how we feel, understand our feeling, understand our weaknesses, understanding our tears, our broken heart, our sorrows. He knows all about it. So when we are sorrowful, God knows how it is. Praise God. He lied and he went and eat bread and drink water in the man's house, in the house of the old prophet. He was clearly, thoroughly deceived. But it shows us that the best of us who speak to God and have power with God have to be remembered to live in His Word. Remember to know His Word. To keep his word in our heart. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. That is how David realized how important and essential, essential the word of God is. He said, I have hid thy word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So it came to pass in verse 20, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 20. It came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Now, now look, look at this now. Because of his, this man had power with God. The man of God had power with God because he prayed. Imagine that the king's harm was withered and he prayed and the, his harm was restored. This man of God had power with God. But because he disobeyed the word of God, God didn't talk to him anymore. You know, when we read up, we, we have to, be, we have to be, be sure that 
God speak to us at all times. We have to be sure that we are in, always in communication with God and He's in communication with us, either by wor words or by feelings or by leading. Because He don't always speak to us, but the Bible says that as many are led by the Spirit. So if God don't speak to us, He also lead us by His Spirit. As many are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So it's not all the time you hear the voice of God. Sometimes you just feel that the Spirit of God is leading you. So the man of the, the old prophet, the Lord did not speak to the man of God anymore he's, because he disobeyed. He went back to the man's house and he was told not to go back, not to eat or drink until he returned to the place where he left. So he obeyed some of the commandments in saying that he should not return in the same way. He went another way, but then he, he, he accepted part of the, the commandment, but half he did not. And so God didn't speak to him again. God spoke to the old man, the prophet. God never speak to that prophet before, the old man. Our God did stop talk to him. God has stopped talking to the old man. But now God speak to the old man. And he cried unto the man of God and said on and cried unto the man of God that came from Judah. So he came from Judah to Bethel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast obeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. You see, this is where the man of God went wrong. And the same thing happened to Saul, the first king of Israel. That God rejected Saul because he did not obey the commandment of the Lord. Brethren, if we want to go to heaven, we have to know the word of God and we have to understand the word of God and we have to accept the word of God. Thus said the Lord, the old man, the prophet, Speak. Can you imagine somebody who may have backslide from the church? Imagine someone who has backslide from the church and the pastor of the church or the leader of the church that God is speaking to the backslider to tell the leader and the pastor or whatever, listen, God say this to you. That's a you know that's a, that's really a daunting thing to think about. But the man cried unto the, he cried unto the man of God, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which he command, which the Lord commanded thee, but comest back, comest back, and have eaten bread and drink water in this place. I wish the Lord did say unto thee, eat no bread, drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre, sepulchre of your fathers, because thou hast not kept the which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but comest back and eaten bread and drink water in this place, which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, drink no water, thy carcass shall come not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass that after he has eaten bread and drunk, that he saddled his ass to wit the prophet whom he to wit the prophet whom had brought him back. And when he has gone, when he has gone, 
a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it the lion also stood by the carcass obedience to the word of God if we obey the word of God we cannot be deceived if we stand by the word of God we cannot be deceived if we lean on the word of God we cannot be deceived many people are claiming that God speak to them and tell them that God told them this told them that there are some people saying that the saints the saints of God will go through tribulation the Bible did not say that that the saints should go through the tribulation if it is so how are we saved how can we say we are saved if we go through the tribulation but the Bible says I will show you a mystery the word says I will show you a mystery we shall be changed we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the trump of God for the trump shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and they that are dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up that is proceeding the great tribulation that shall come upon the earth and when we look at what is going on in the earth today we can see that the coming of the Lord draw it near nigh we can tell all the signs that were spoken of by the prophets that were spoken of by Jesus we are seeing them fulfilling right before our eyes we are seeing the Bible says in the last days of days he shall shorten the days and we can see the days everyone can see how the days are getting short and it's getting shorter and shorter and it's preceding the coming of the Lord but the saints of God will not be in the great tribulation the Bible never tells, said that not the saints of God so that is some deception other deception is that people are saying that um, Jesus was just a prophet that is deception Jesus was not just a prophet Jesus was God in the form of sinful flesh Jesus was God who came to earth descended and was born as of a woman and lived as we did he put on flesh but in him was the Godhead in him was the great I am in him was the everlasting father he in him was the I am that I am he was not just a prophet Jesus was not just a prophet he was God and so it was because of his obedience to the Word of God which gave us salvation it's because of his obedience because of one man disobedient this world was condemned but because of one man disobedience which was Jesus we have life he said he came to give us life and more abundantly so let's be not deceived at any time be not deceived be not, not, don't be led away don't be led away by doctrines the doctrine we know is that Jesus came and he was born and he died 
and he was buried and he resurrected after three days and he ascended back to heaven from whence he came. And also the doctrine is that repentance is, um, is, is what God requires of us, repentance. And baptism in the name of Jesus for the removing of sin and to receive the Spirit of God which he gives freely. That is salvation. That is our doctrine. And Paul said, if any man, if any angel from heaven came and preached another doctrine than that which we preach, let him be a curse. Hallelujah. He said, even an angel from heaven come and tell you that Jesus is not Lord, let him be a curse. If an angel from heaven come and tell you that you no need of baptism, you no need to be baptized, let him be accursed. That you don't need to serve God, let him be accursed. Because the word of God is sure. So the man of God, because of disobedient and decept being deceived, he saddled his ass and he went on his way. And the Bible says, when he had gone, a lion met, oh glory to God. A lion met him. These are for our admonition, for us to see how God honors his word. This is for us, to see how God honors his word. He was told not to do this thing. And blatantly, he disobeyed. And he said, and he sat this ass and on his way a lion met him and slew him, kill him. And his carcass was in the way. And the ass stood by and by it, and the lion stood by the carcass. And behold, and behold, men passed by and saw the carcass in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city which the poor prophet dwell. And when the prophet had brought him back the way thereof, he said, it is the man of God who, disobey, who's dis, who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord has delivered him unto the lion which has torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which I spake unto him. So because he disobeyed the same prophet who lied to him, see the, full, see the destruction of his disobedience. Disobedience lead to destruction. It's not just this, it's many, many instances if we look to the word of God that God honors his word and if we are as children of God God expects us to honor his word not say God is not forgiving God is forgiving he's forgiven if we repent to God 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 is forgiven the Bible says God is not slack concerning his promise he's not willing God is not willing that any man should perish but all should come to repentance God is not willing that any man should perish. God is not willing that any man should be cut off from his presence. He's not willing. That's not the will of God. God loved every man. And God loved us so much that he died for us. And we must realize that we are in the image of the Almighty God. We are made in his image. So when we look in the mirror, we will see, we will understand that God Almighty look like we do because we are in His image. We have two hands, God have two hands. We have two eyes, God have two eyes. God have a nose, He has two ears, He has feet. He has hair like we have. 
God is not a mystery. If we open our heart to God, God will reveal himself to us. And we will see that he is not a mystery. We can understand God through his word. We can see God through his word. Because God is never separated from his word. He said he sent his word out. And his word has to come back. It cannot come back to him void. It must fulfill whatever he sent it to. That is the God we serve. The great, big, excellent, wonderful God. The mighty God of Jacob. Rise up. Look at the Almighty God. Look at the great God. Look at the great I am. Always victorious. And always watching over us. So this, what we know is that we must not be deceived because so many deception is going on. But we should not be deceived. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers and God bless you for joining us. I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song for us. We're going to close. We have with us um, Marcelo joining us tonight. He's one of our, he's our guest staying with us today. God bless you, Marcelo. Sister Rose, you want to sing a song for us? Can you sing a song for us? Are you there? Yeah, it's not going to have any feedback. So sometimes it doesn't work. I'm, it's I'm, working I'm, fine. It's working fine. Okay, I'll just do a chorus. Yeah. Okay. Jesus knows all about our struggles. And he will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one, no, not one, and you know the friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one, no, not one, oh, Jesus knows all about our struggles, and he will guide until the day is done. There is not a friend but the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not a highway that is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No, not so dark that his love can cheer us. No, not one. Oh, no, not one. Oh, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There is not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Oh, Jesus knows all about our struggles. And He will guide until the day is done. There is not a friend like the Holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rose. God bless you for joining us. Good. Welcome, Mom, Marcella. God bless you for joining us. And hope every God bless you, PT as well, and everyone else. God bless you. We're gonna come to a close, and may the Lord, good Lord, bless you and keep you. In the name of Jesus, Mar Mar Marcella, do you want to say hello to everyone? 
Now maybe not. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. Bless us now, we pray. Cover us under your blood. Keep us and protect us. Guide us and keep us. We give you path thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Have your way, we pray. And that which we fail to ask, you fail not to grant unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you each and every one.